All right, we're going to be taking a look at this circuit today. It's an NPN transistor. It's going to drive an LED of a 100 ohm load on the LED. So you can imagine if the transistor turns on and this is ground, you have 100 ohms going through the going through the uh, through the diode. All right, and we're going to use this 100 ohms um, to measure the current. We can measure the voltage across this uh, across this resistor, and that will give us the, the total current through here. Now we're going to turn this transistor on by a 100K resistor and everything is operating at 12 volts. So that's, a, that's what we have, right? So here is the, uh, here's the circuit. You can see the, uh, see the LED is on, all right? So let me uh, see if I can get everything on camera here. Uh, I think that will be okay. All right, so I've got the uh, multimeter hooked up and uh, we can take a look at the voltage across that 100 ohm resistor, okay? So we're going to do that. And we are measuring about 1.98 volts across that 100 ohms. So if we take uh, 2 volts and divide it by 100 ohms, that is 20 milliamps. So we have 20 milliamps flowing, flowing in this resistor, okay? All right. And uh, so let's take out this transistor. This is a 2N3904, so very, very popular uh, transistor. We'll pop this one in and we'll measure the voltage. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, we got eight volts going through the, uh, eight, volts, eight volts going through the, uh, 8.2 volts going through the 100 ohm resistor. And that's going to give us uh, 82 milliamps. So now we have 82 milliamps going through the, uh, going through the LED. What, what's up with that? I mean, what's up with that? <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, let's talk about this. Um, let's put the, uh, let's put the 3904 back in there. All right. And, um, how does this circuit work? Okay. Well, an NPN transistor is a current multiplier. So whatever current goes through the base gets multiplied and that's the current going through the, going through the emitter, uh, the, the collector. So the, the ratio of current gain, current in versus current out is called HFE. All right. And we can measure the HFE of this uh, transistor by using one of these little boxes. Okay. Sorry about the dryer in the background. All right, so we will put this in our tester. And we're getting an HFE of 173. 173, all right? So if we have 173 and we have uh, 1.8 volts divided by 100. And what did I say? 173. Yeah. Let's divide that by 173. We only need 0.1 milliamps of drive current in order to get that. So let's measure our drive current. We have, we can put our, uh, we can put our meter across this 100 K ohm resistor and we can measure that. And actually, uh, we have 11 volts. So we have 11 volts divided by 100K. We have 1.1 1 .1, uh, point, let's see, 100, 100K. There we go, 100K. Um, 0.11 milliamps. So we have 0.11 milliamps going in. And we have... Uh, so we have the ratio of 1.9, oops, 1.99 to 1, 1. Okay. So we, we, we are showing a ratio of about 180. So in this particular circuit, we're multiplying the gain by about 180. And what did we measure the, uh, what did we measure it here in the little box? I think it was 177, right? Let's see if it's changing because things are heating up. 173. So you can see that this, this HFE tells you the gain, the current gain. And we've measured the current gain in the um, emitter. 
and the collector, collector emitter. And we've measured the base uh, current and we're getting about the right amount, okay? So if we change these transistors and this transistor is 82, uh, 8.2 volts, 8.2 volts by, by 100, that's 82 milliamps, right? We have 82 milliamps and it took 0.11 milliamps to drive it. So we're getting a, a, a gain of like 745. Our HFE is like 745. It's something crazy. And so let's go ahead and measure the HFE of this transistor. Why is it so hard? Hi. Um, and we'll see what our little box says. A little box says it's actually 54,000. <laughs> so something's limiting in our circuit. We, we don't get all the way up to 54,000. It's on as much as it can be on, basically. So how can we get an HFE of 54,000? What is that? What is that? <laughs> what, what kind of magic transistor is this? Looks the same. Okay, one is a 2N. 3904. The other transistor we're using is an MPSA14, I think, and it is a Darlington. Darlington. And a Darlington transistor looks like this. So this is all inside that piece of plastic, okay? It's actually two transistors. It's a helper transistor to the other transistor. So if this has an HFE of say 173, and this one has an HF of 173, then you would have 173 times 173. I sorry, I didn't. 173. Okay, so 173 would be would be an HFE of 30,000. Okay, 30,000. And so you can see how it quickly, quickly adds up to get these really, really nice, nice HFEs. Um, so Darlington trans transistors are great. They're a little more expensive than regular transistors because you got twice as much stuff in there, right? All right. So um, our, our, does that mean you're not going to use this one? Does that mean you're going to use this one because it's better? No. It, this one, if we want to turn the LED on harder, we can just change that 100, 100K, right? And, um, but... We might not have all that current available. It would require a little bit more current over here. So maybe we want a very, very small amount of current. Maybe we don't have a lot available to us. And so this um, this Darlington is going to be it's going to be great in that situation. Okay. But there's one better, and this is kind of the modern the modern version now. Okay. Um, it's an N channel uh, device, a two N seven thousand. They're very, very popular little parts, okay? And they're exactly pin compatible. <laughs> so we can pop it on our we can pop it in our circuit over here, okay? So let's take uh, our two n seven thousand put him in. Let's take a look at how much. Oh, look, eight point eight. It's even better. eight point eight. And um, the the nice thing about these um, fets are they're not a current device. This 100K doesn't really matter. You could put a one mega ohm resistor here. It wouldn't matter. They're a voltage device. Um, and so if you at least have, let's say, I don't know, I don't remember what the on, what the on uh, voltage is for these, but let's say it's two volts. As long as you're above two volts, it takes very, very little current, a nano amp of current or something um, in order to turn this thing on. So they're very, very good. And they have very little amount of uh, a voltage drop in them as well. So uh, these days you'll probably see a lot of uh, 2N7000s. Um, I looked these up online uh, on, I think it was Mauser. I think these were about uh, about five cents each and these were about 11 cents each, something like that. So, you know, it's, it's twice as much. And if you have a lot of them in your circuit, um, it adds up. So, you know, design for cost. Uh, if cost is everything, then you're going to use one of these cheap parts. But uh, if you need higher current capability or lower input current and stuff like that, the, the, the 2N7000 is a great part. The way that you would hook it up is you would put the, uh, 
drain here, the source here, and the gate here. Over here we have the collector, emitter, and base. And uh, so, yeah, they are basically pin compatible. Yeah, but which one, which one do I really choose, right? So let's look at some data sheets. This will be a good exercise to take a look at data sheets and try to look at to see what, what's the really important. Data sheets are kind of big and confusing. And what are the important things to look for in the data sheet? So the first one we're going to be looking at here is the uh, uh, 2N3904. Uh, it's, my pen's not reading. Uh, it's a double data sheet, so ignore the, the O3. I've never heard of such a thing, actually. <laughs> and our transistor uh, was actually this one. It was, it was the one with the bent lead. So you can get them straight leaded or bent leads. I actually, actually have a bunch of the bent lead ones. Um, not that it matters. They're going to be electrically the same. So what's really, what's really, really important here? So one of the things that's very important is this first line here, the, the uh, uh, voltage uh, from some... Uh, collector to emitter. So that is the voltage. That is the voltage from the collector to emitter. So across here. So you basically go up here and say 12 volts. Well, it's going to have maybe maximum of 12 volts across it, right? There'll be some voltage drop here, but to be safe, just use this voltage, right? So if it's a 12 volt system, you say, okay, my collector emitter, if emitter is grounded and my collector was 12 volts, then I'd have 12 volts across here. That's my very, very worst case, right? So we take a look here and we say, okay, ah, okay, good. It says 40 volts. We can go up to 40 volts in this thing. We'll still be happy. So, uh, so that's one thing to, uh, that's one thing to be worried about. All right. The next thing that's worried about is the, uh, the current, right? How much current do we, do we need? How much current do we need to light that led or turn on that motor or, or whatever it is, right? So we're going to look down here and we can say, uh, okay, don't care about that. Don't get, here we go. So collector current. So it says collector current. Well, what about the emitter current? Well, they always just say collector current, but it, it's going through the emitter too. So it's collector to emitter. It's the current, the current going going through here, right? It's called collector current. So, um, so the collector current says continuous. That's also interesting because some data sheets will say continuous and some will say pulsed, right? And the pulse can be a whole lot higher than continuous because it's a it's a power factor thing. This says that we can have. Uh, 200 milliamps maximum. That's not very much. 200 milliamps maximum. So it's certainly good for an LED, but probably not good for a motor, right? Maybe your motor is say half an amp or something. Um, yeah, 200 milliamps is as much as, as a 3904 can go. Okay, so most of these other things you don't really care about. <laughs> um, the other thing that you're going to be interested in um, would be something that we measured, which was the, uh, uh, what's called HFE, right? Sometimes you'll see it written this way, a little H with a FE. Sometimes you'll see a big H with an FE. Sometimes it'll all be on the same line. Um, but sometimes the FE will be a subscript to the H. Anyway, um, another thing that you'll see is something called beta. Okay. Beta. So you might learn in school the beta of the transistor, okay? And uh, just just that's just say those are the same. Beta and HFE are the same thing. I don't know why they don't call it beta anymore, but HFE is kind of the standard everywhere. So if you learn beta, don't <laughs> don't use it anymore. Uh, be more be more intelligent and use HFE, okay? So uh, yeah, so thirty nine oh four under certain conditions. Uh, let's see here. The current maximum 100.1 milliamp. I uh, collector current. We had more than that. One milliamp collector current. Uh, we had more than that. We had about 20 milliamps of collector current, right? So here's 10 milliamps of uh, collector current and 50. So we're somewhere between the 10, 10 and 50. Okay. So let's take a look at those numbers. So sometimes it's good to have a uh, a ruler so you can figure out what's going on here. So. Uh, 3904, that's a 30, 3903, it's 3904. So it's it's these these numbers here for uh, 10 milliamps. And for 50 milliamps, it's this number right here. Okay. So what does that tell us? It says that there's a range. There's a min, there's a min and a max. It says that it'll never be more than 300 uh, uh, HFE, but Typically, 
it's going to be somewhere in between here. It says minimum of 100, maximum of 300. Well, what did we measure? Well, it was like 173, 177. So, yeah, so we were sort of in here. And then you can say, okay, well, but we were at 20 milliamps, so we were still in here. We were, we were good. But it says 50 milliamps, it drops down to 60. So the higher the current, the less um, the current gain you're going to get. Remember, HFE is current gain. Current base current versus collector current, how much gain you get. So it's going to have a gain of about 100 to 300, but if you go up to 50 milliamps, it's going to drop down to 60. And if you go up to 100 milliamps, it's going to drop down to 30, right? So um, you think, oh, a 2N3904 has a beta of 300 to 100 to 300, but you're driving it at 100 milliamps, which is only half its rated current, the uh, HFE drops all the way down to 30. So you might not have enough drive condition to, uh, to make it. So, so yeah, so these are very interesting and very important to know about. Uh, you might be worried about the saturation voltage. When this thing is hard on, what is the collector emitter voltage? What, how much voltage drop is there going to be? Collector emitter voltage, right? Here's collector emitter saturation voltage. And it's going to be somewhere in the 0.2 to 0.3 volt range. That shouldn't be too bad for something like a motor or an LED, only losing 0.3 volts. That's, that's not bad at all, right? I don't think we care too much about the other things in here. If it's going fast, you might care about its speed. But for an LED, we're not worried about speed. But there's going to be a switching time. Uh, it says here, switching characteristics. 35 nanosecond rise time, 35 nanosecond delay time. Um, sometimes they'll give a frequency spec. This one doesn't. Oh, here we go. Um, let's see here. Current gain bandwidth product. This is a little bit more complicated than I want to do in this video, but it's a, it's a 300 megahertz part, but it's 300 megahertz at a gain of one. So if you have any gain on top of that, you might have something less. So it says here, uh, like 10 milliamps, uh, of collector current, you can get up to maybe hundred megahertz, something like that. Right. So anyway, you can take a look at those things. All right. So, so what do we know about this? Is this a good choice for us? Well, we know that, uh, we might need some current to drive it. Um, Voltage range is okay, but it doesn't have a lot of current carrying capability, so that might be a limitation, only 200 milliamps. So let's look at the next one. The next one was the uh, MPSA14. It was this, this package here. Let's look at its values. Uh, collector emitter volt, ooh, it's only 30 volts, so it's less, right? But still within our 12 volt range, so down to 30 volts. Uh, the... Um, Continuous collector current is 1.2 amps. Wow, this thing's a beast, right? So this would be really good maybe for a motor, right? Much better than the, uh, than the 3904. We have 1.2 amps. That's quite, that's quite healthy. Um, let's see here. We can look at some other characteristics. We were worried about the uh, collector emitter voltage. Uh, let's see here. Uh, collector emitter. Where's the on? Where's the on number here? I don't see it. Oh, huh. okay. We'll have to find that one. Um, we have uh, current gain, our HFE. Here, uh, HFE, DC current gain, right? So we're somewhere around 10,000 to 20,000. <laughs> so yeah, this thing has plenty of game, gain. And then uh, collector, here we go. Collector emitter saturation voltage. Ooh, it's terrible. One and a half volts. Okay. So not good at all there. Um, at 100 milliamps uh, with uh, 100 microamps of base current, 100 microamps of uh, milliamps of collector current. It's a volt and a half. That's not good at all. So we might reject this part because it has a, a big uh, collector emitter saturation voltage. Okay, so let's go to our last part, which was the uh, N channel, uh, N -channel uh, MOSFET, which is the uh, 2N7000, very, very popular part. Um, 
I think there's a, 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 a version of this that has a, a, a little heat sink tab sticking out the top too. I'm not sure what part number that is, but uh, let's see. Let's take a look at this one. All right, so we have, uh, we have this package and um, we are worried about its uh, drain to source voltage. So we were looking at the collector emitter voltage. Well, this has s s drains and sources. It's good up to 60 volts. Well, 60 volts is very, very good. All right, uh, maximum drain current, continuous, uh, 2N7000, oh, it's this one. So it's 200 milliamps. So not as much as I thought. Um, I thought it was better than this. Uh, pulsed, it's good to 500 milliamps, but continuous, it's only 200 milliamps. So yeah, pretty wimpy little part for an in-channel MOSFET. Um, now, didn't we just say something on the front that seemed, seemed like it was going to be better than that? Um, can be used in most applications requiring up to 400 milliamps and pulsed at two amps. Never, never believe the descriptions. <laughs> I never believe the descriptions. Um, okay, so yeah, that did that just doesn't pan out here in the actual numbers themselves. Um, yeah, 200 milliamps. I'm really shocked about that. I really am. And then let's look at the on. Sometimes it's specified in ohms. The on and sometimes it's specified in voltage drop. Gate threshold voltage uh, needs at least uh, 0.8 volts to turn on because um, it's a voltage device, not a current device. And let's look at the drop. How much drop are we going to have here? Uh, maximum power, thermal resistance. That's for, that's for something else. Drain sort breakdown voltage, 60 volts. Gets good, microamps, milliamps, gate threshold voltage, I don't see it yet. Uh, static, oh, here we go. It gives it as a on resistance, okay? And so we're going to have about, uh, Somewhere in the 1.2 to 2.4 volt range, somewhere in there, uh, ohm range. So about one ohm, 0.2 ohms. So that's going to be really, really good. Very, very low um, voltage, right? It's going to give us to it in a in a voltage. So in a, I mean in an ohms. So if we have ohms, two ohms, and we say have 100 milliamps, that's 0.2 volts, right? So we would only have uh, 0.2 volts, basically collector, collector emitter saturation voltage uh, in this type of device would be only 0.2 volts. So that's where these things really, really shine. They have a very, very good low, a low point. All right, well, there you go. There's a whole bunch of graphs and stuff that are valuable when you go to actually put this into to a design and, and do things in it. So, so what did we learn? Well, we learned that uh, this little guy seemed to have quite a bit of current capability. That's pretty surprising. Um, he might get pretty hot though. He might need a heat sink. Even though it said it would take an amp, uh, I think it probably would require a, a heat sink um, in, in order to do that application. So you would have to look at that on the data sheet. 3094, 200 milliamps. The 2N7000, also 200 milliamps. A very, 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 very surprised. So anyway, there you go. So yeah, read the data sheets. You can learn a lot from them and uh, the part might be not as good as you think. Remember, remember that beta problem that we had, the uh, HFE really, really dropped when you went to 100 milliamps and only had like a, an HFE of, of uh, 30. Uh, it was pretty bad, right? One of the things that we didn't look, look, look on, on the data sheet is how much base current that we need. Uh, very, very little for, a, for an NMOS gate. It's gonna be very, very small. And then uh, very, very small for the uh, Darlington. And then uh, something, something much bigger, right? If this thing had only a gain of 30 and we were trying to get, uh, we were trying to get say 100 milliamps out of it and we have an HFE of 30, we would need to supply three milliamps, right? 
and uh, three milliamps uh, would require a 3.6 ohm resistor. Is that right? 3.6. If we had 12 volts and we divided it by 3.6, we would get uh, 3 amps. That's not right. So 3.6K. 3, 3. <laughs> I'm sorry. 3.6K. Uh, instead of 100K, um, you would need to bump that up to 3.6K in order to get an, uh, enough uh, enough current through here. So there you go.